despair, I should accuse myself. And by despairing shouldst thou stand excused for doing worthy vengeance upon thyself, which didst unworthy slaughter upon others. Say that I slew them not. And then say that they were not slain. But dead they are, and devilish slain by thee. I did not kill your husband. Why, then he is alive. Nay, he's dead. Slain by Edward's hand. In thy foul throat thou liest, Queen Margaret saw thy murderous falchion smoking in his blood. I was provoked by her slanderous tongue, which laid their guilt upon my guiltless shoulders. Thou was provoked by thy bloody mind, which never dreamt of aught but butchery. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Dost grant me, hedgehog. Then God grant me too, thou mayst be damned for that most <coughs> wicked deed. He was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The better for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven. Where thou shalt never come. Well, let him thank me that hope to send him thither, for he was better for that place than earth. And that one fit for any place but hell. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. One place else, if you'll hear me name it. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. <laughs> Betide the chamber where thou liest. So will it, now, <coughs> till I lie with you. I hope so. I know so. <coughs> Gentle Lady Anne, to leave this keen encounter of our wits, and fall somewhat into a slower method. Is not the causer of these timeless deaths as blameful as the executioner? Thou art the cause and the most accursed effect. Your beauty cause of that effect, your beauty, which did haunt me in my sleep to undertake the death of all the world so I might live one hour in your sweet bosom. If I thought that, I tell thee, homicide, these nails should rend that beauty from my cheek. <laughs> no, these eyes could never endure that beauty's rack. You should not blemish it. I stood by as all the world is cheered by the sun, so I by that it is my day. It is my life. Black night for shade thy day. And death thy life. Curse not thyself, fair creature, thou art both. I would I were to be revenged on thee. It is a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth you. It is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that killed my husband. He that bereft thee, lady, of thy husband, did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Where is he? Here! thou spit at me? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet a place. Never hung poison on a fowler toad out of my sight. Thou dost infect my eyes. Thine eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Would they were basilisks to strike thee dead? I would they were, that I might die at once, for now they kill me with a living death. Those eyes, of thine from mine have drawn salt tears, shamed their aspect with sort of childish drops. And what these sorrows could not thence exhale, thy beauty hath made them blind with weeping. In sad times, my manly eyes did scorn and humble tear. And my tongue could never learn a sweet, smoothing word, but now. Thy beauty is proposed my fee, my proud heart soothes, it prompts my tongue to speak. Teach not thy lips of scorn, it was made for kissing, lady, not for such contempt. Thy revengeful heart cannot forgive. Lo, 
Here I lend thee this sharp pointed sword, which if thou pleaseth to hide in this true bosom, and let the soul forth that adoreth thee, I lay it naked to the deadly stroke. I humbly beg the death upon my knee. <coughs> Nay, do not pause, for it was I that killed King Henry, but t'was thy beauty that provoked me. Oh, nay, now dispatched, it was I that stabbed young Edward. But t'was thy heavenly face that set me on. <coughs> take up the sword again. Oh, take up me. Arise, dissembler. Though I wish thy death, I will not be thy executioner. You can be killed myself. I'll do it. I have already. That was in thy rage. Speak it again. And even with the word, this hand, which for thy love did kill thy love, shall for thy love kill a far truer love. And to both their deaths shalt thou be accessory. I would I knew thy heart. Tis figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. And never man was true. Well. Well, put up your sword. And say that my peace is made. That you shall know hereafter. Shall I live in hope? All men. I hope to live so. Such safe is where the spring. To take is not to give. Look. How my ring encompasseth thy finger. Even so, thy breast encloseth my poor heart. Where both of them, for both of them are thine. And if thy poor devoted suppliant may beg but one favor at thy gracious hand, thou dost confirm his happiness forever. What is it? That it would please you. Leave these sad designs to him that hath more cause to be a mourner, and presently repair to Crosby Place. Where after I have interred at Chertsey Monastery this noble king, and wet his grave with my repentant tears, I will with all duty see you. For diverse unknown reasons I beseech you, grant me this food. With all my heart, and much it joys me too to see you are become so penitent. You think farewell? more than you deserve. But since you teach me how to flatter you, imagine I have said farewell already.